Thank you very much and good afternoon. And I am, I am glad that we have a chance on this panel to, to respond to some of the earlier questions and to bring more, uh, bring additional balance to the discussion this afternoon. So I'm gonna talk to you very briefly about how PepsiCo brings resilience into our agricultural supply chain. So PepsiCo is one of the largest agricultural enterprises in the world. We've got iconic brands, many of which um, you can see below. And um, as a large agricultural enterprise, a large food and beverage company, we depend on agricultural raw materials for every single one of our products. And um, just to give you an example of some of the scale, we grow or source 4 million tons of potatoes for Frito-Lay. We use 600,000 tons of oats for Quaker. We source 3 million tons of oranges and other fruits and vegetables for Tropicana, Naked Juice, and Sobe. And we procure agricultural raw materials from approximately 100 companies throughout the globe. So um, we are very much dependent on agriculture and on the ability of farmers to produce these crops. And as, as you all know, farmers have, from time immemorial, had to work with great uncertainty. They've always had to deal with um, unpredictability in the weather or pests or even the markets that they're operating within. So managing water and climate is just a small part of our corporation's approach to superior performance, which we call performance with purpose. It's how we achieve business success while leaving a positive imprint on, on society. Uh, so I'm gonna talk about our sustainable agric agriculture program. We, we build, the resist, we build resi resilience into our sustainable ag program primarily through four routes. We look at new varieties and we look for varieties that will give us better yields, solids, lower defects, depending on which crop it is that, for which product, which end product we're um, producing. We're looking for some that may require less fertilizer, which of course has a climate change impact. We're looking at some that are dr more drought tolerant. We're developing tools with partners that will help us and our farmers better manage resources. So one of the crops, one of the tools I'll briefly talk about is our iCrop precision agriculture tool. Um, we also look at modified agronomy. How can we work with different irrigation technologies such as drip irrigation or different fertilizers such as low carbon and organic fertilizers and their application rates to, again, reduce the impact on climate change. And then a, another tool that I'll talk about is the Cool Farm tool. And this is a tool that, again, we've developed with partners that helps us to look at where in our supply chain for a particular product should we really be focusing our energy for carbon management. So the iCrop tool is a, a really neat piece of precision agriculture. And basically, it's a tool that we've developed with Cambridge University and it uses soil moisture probes, weather stations, and looking at the canopy crop cover, the crop canopy cover, sorry, <laughs> and um, looking at, and then we use that with yield models, and together those all help a farmer know how much water to apply and when to apply that water. So we started using this in the UK during years that, um, our potato farmers were experiencing a lot of droughts and really were questioning the, their security and ability to continue producing. So farmers now who may have been sort of automatically, say, every Friday applying water to their crop with the use of iCrop, they're able to realize, ooh, I don't need to apply that much water to my crop because I'm not really getting any extra bang for the buck. I'm, um, I've got cost implications on the water that I'm using and potentially on fertilizers that may be leaching through the soil, um, which obviously is not something that the farmers can afford and that, that none of us want. Um, drip irrigation, just a quick word on that. We've got farmers who are using drip irrigation on crops and in geographies where drip irrigation, which has been around for decades, hasn't been used. And we're seeing outstanding 
results not only in improved yields, but also in reduced water. And, and then some of them are using drip irrigation in tandem with the iCrop tool. So the cool farm tool, basically throughout Western Europe, um, we did carbon footprints to see, well, where, again, where should we be working with um, our growers on trying to minimize greenhouse gas emissions. And pretty much across the UK, Western Europe, and Iberia, we see that fertilizer production um, and use is really the place that we should be working with them. So the neat thing about this tool is we can use it with farmers and ultimately farmers will be able to use it to basically sort of do a, a carbon budget within their production um, operation and then look at how they can reduce greenhouse gas emissions as they produce their crop. So when you put these tools together, um, they sort of, again, they, they make the basis for our sustainable agriculture program. They help our farmers be more resilient. And um, on top of that, they help to ensure that we have sustainable sourcing of materials so that they will keep coming to the back door of the manufacturing plants so we can continue to produce the products which many of you have enjoyed. So thank you.